Welcome to the channel everybody, my name is Ryan and we are back with more RimWorld today. This is, of course, the Medieval and Magic Colony, and we are coming off of the recent episode which was titled The Mental Break Episode. So, you can kind of see the state we're in now. Beetle has just, in fact, finished destroying this door right here. So, we're going to unpause things. I did order Diver to get... Oh, he's going for the bed. Of course, he chooses the bed that's occupied. But, uh, yeah, this prior to this mental break, we've had a string of like three or four in a row. But it's partly a combination of this high psychic drone, recent deaths, and just, you know, a general overall hatred of the colony. Now, I think most of our colonists are happy. Like I say, sometimes there are just overall negative mood debuffs. My child Borba is unhappy. Yeah, that's like a double strike there. You get the high psychic drone, which makes the child unhappy, which makes the parent doubly unhappy. But nonetheless, oh, look at this. Oyster's just literally trying to wander out. Oh, sorry, buddy. Got that door slammed right in his face. Ah, uh, well, so anyway, now that that seems to be settled, we can speed things up. Let's take a quick peek at our timeline. Oh, look at the wealth going on here. But um, there is a gap here, although there can be a much more significant gap if we take a look at the prior dots here. So we could have a raid any time, or we could just sit peacefully for a little while, either of which I'm kind of happy with. You know, I'd love to fill out some more magic stuff, get some guys trained up. So, where I'm also really considering the ancient or arcane script, commenter did let me know what this does. So I really appreciate that. I'll pop that up on the screen for you guys. But we are probably going to use it too. Unfortunately, we had a failed caster bridging, so we're just going to wait for that to reset and move along. Okay, well, looks like we've got another mental break. Cole just dug up Kelly the Shaman and Corpse Obsession. You know what that means. I mean, of all the mental breaks, though, honestly, that's one I can deal with. No doubt about it. We'll just hurry up and get this person buried. Poor old Kelly. Now, it will affect, of course, the person who buries them, or anybody who sees the corpse. They won't necessarily love that, but... We haven't been able to change that, as I recall, in my ideology yet. Let's check our ideology real quick. Okay, we are looking for another reformation, but I've got 15 points to get through, so... Let's see, I can't remember. Corpses are considered ugly, yeah, so... Thank you, Kaz. Who knows, Kaz will probably have a mental break now, too, because he is an infant with genetic pessimism, but... Don't worry, I am keeping a close eye on the different... Uh, yeah, ceremonies we can do. So as soon as one comes off cooldown, we're immediately going to start a new one. Okay, well, not to bore you with more ritual stuff here, but I did discover that the leader speech is available. And yes, that one will deliver some, potentially deliver some ideology points if we do it well. So let's speed things up and see how Indo's speech goes. Okay, he's almost done. Oh. <gasps> There it is, encouraging leader speech. We got one point. Okay, okay, not too bad. I was hoping maybe a wanderer would join things, but, or join us, but no worries, no worries. Now, all we have to work on is clearing out this prison, because I'm tired of all these prison breaks we've been having. Also, it would be great if we empty this out. We could actually arrest Chris. I think that's probably what we're going to have to do. Resort to arresting our boy Chris here, just so we can convert him over. It is much easier when they're a prisoner. Oh my god, look at this. This is insane. I was just talking about Chris. He has given up on the community. The final straw was his own psychite withdrawal. Oh my god, let me look at this guy. Damn it, he's got some of my stuff on him. Well, all of this is my stuff. He's wearing a Devil Strand coat of good quality. Okay, we're going to arrest him right now. I was going to just, I was toying with the idea of just letting him go. Not even going to lie to you, but... Oh, 66% chance, that's not great. Now, with all that gear he's got on him, we've got to get him arrested. Let's see, can the kid do it? 60% chance. Oh, here's Maverick. Come on, Mav. 100%. All right, get over here. Let's... No, arrest him. Oh, there's two of them stacked there. That's what's going on. <laughs> Didn't even see that. You got to watch it sometimes when you pause the game. Weird things occur, but we are going to grab him... 
Make sure you gotta click it a few times sometimes with these arrest orders on your own colonists, but come on, got him. Okay, okay. So it's not ideal. Again, I haven't made any progress really over here on our prisoners, but I'm just gonna start releasing the ones we don't want because it might be a little while before Chris is fully converted. Hey, all right, this looks like a pretty fun party over here. After that psychic probe went away, I guess they decided to celebrate on their own. Unfortunately, no ritual points from this, but they will get a little mood boost as long as it's not canceled prematurely. So let's hope Cole doesn't dig up another corpse. She's still roaming around. She probably will at some point. Anyway, um, we've started the long, laborious process of smelting all of these weapons. It's gotten ridiculous. My stockpile is an absolute degenerate mess, and I've simply run out of planks to build any more of our things of course we got more planks working too but um yeah things are just out of control here in our stockpile so that's kind of my current task but we're also juggling a few other priorities of course the prisoners and we're really hoping we can get our first crop coming along pretty soon yeah we're out our people are eating simple meals and occasionally a bit of raw meat when our cooks can't keep up but check it out we got ourselves a new research so yeah i've been focused on the magic here maybe i should look at the veg vegetable garden advanced planter box no i'll we'll, we'll stick with magic this is something I've been wanting to do. So I don't, um, half of these things, well, I should be honest, 95% of the things in here, I don't know what they do. But we are going to learn them together. The Arcane Forge sounds pretty amazing. Oh. This looks like advanced grabbing. Okay, so it gives us better spells to shoot for. Oh, Arcane Artifacts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got to watch out, too. Some of these things we'll, we'll need, like, maybe, I don't know, scrolls for. Although these don't look like they do. Dormant Hollow Golem. Oh, yeah, a few people have recommended golems, too. That would certainly help with defense, wouldn't it? A flesh golem. So is this, this is what we need human flesh for? I think a dormant flesh golem. Flesh golems are bipedal mass. Ba -ba -ba, while dormant. Let's see. Created at the butcher table. Ooh. Yeah, um, that's interesting. A bit disgusting, but let's see. Expert enchanting. Let's go for the golems. I don't know what a hollow golem is made out of, but I do know that we've got plenty of flesh lying around. So it might be gruesome and it might piss off some of our colonists. But then again, we've got plenty of psychopaths around here too. So we might not be too affected by that. Oh man, Chris is not happy. He just went berserk. Well, let's have a little impromptu gladiatorial match in here. Oh, oh, nope, never mind. Kaz the monk is stepping in. Oh, Chris, you didn't stand a chance, boy. Well, that's no big deal. He's not permanently injured, I don't think. Now, he came in with a bionic stomach. Trust me, I didn't give him that. He was obvious. I think he was a wanderer. I can't remember because he does have a different ideology. But regardless, he's here. He's awake now. So we can actually hit him with our spell. Get over here, Barra. But um, he might be kind of a tough nut to crack. Let's watch the spell. Yeah, see, it only took off, I don't know, what, one-fifth of his bar there. But regardless, we're going to work on him, unless he ends up killing himself or some of the other prisoners, that is. Well, 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 check it out. Cookie and Blitz are getting married. The ceremony is taking place right now. Everybody's lined up so nicely. We got the kids sitting over here at the kiddie table. Stay quiet, you two. The adults are having a serious moment right now. Let's speed it up. This is going to give us another little boot boost here. Not to be too utilitarian about it, but I'm just glad Cookie and Blitz are finally making things official. Maybe they'll have a little kid, a little Cookie Blitz, uh, but you never know. I am still have yet to see a child get the, a magical or a physically gifted trait. Who knows, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't, but either way, I'm still waiting on the rituals to recycle, so nothing else is going on other than a little bit of marriage celebration at the moment. Man, we are still on the lookout for more construction pawns. 
but at least we are starting to get things underway here with our traps too. This is a very important section. The wall here, over here, this is the very uh, eastern side of the colony as you can see. It's been attacked multiple times and we're still not fully repaired, but the traps will help. And you know what I like to imagine here? These are bone traps I've made. And of course they're the bones of the animals we hunted, but if we start butchering humans up, for those golems then we might be able to make traps out of the bones of fallen raiders which then new raiders will you know be struck on but I don't, that just occurred to me that sick morbid it's amazing where rim world takes a person's mind too isn't it but uh anyway yeah it's a disgusting disgusting world here we live it in but um okay let's move on okay we got a sky lantern festival about to finish there it is, beautiful, plus one point. Okay, well, like I said, we're we're moving right along with these rituals. I think that's the only one currently. Let's check the status. We got a few points, seven of 18, okay. Not quite to halfway, but let's grab Barra real quick. Maybe we can do a, ri a conversion ritual. Nope, it's getting close, so counting down from 100 to zero, basically, or a couple percent. So this one's getting ready. Let's try a couple of these. Negative 14, again, close. Jubilee, that one's uh, still more than 50% away. And Caster Bridging, uh, the very, very important one. Negative 71, so just more time to sit by. How about a public execution? Oh, we can do one of those. Unfortunately, right now, all the prisoners we have are desirable. So I should have probably kept one or two around just for execution, but I wanted them out of here. I was tired of staring at them. So this hero over here is a too smart bloodluster. Hopefully she will join us. No permanent injuries on her. And this young man, Oyster. Oh, by the way, these two have already been recruited or I'm sorry, converted, you'll see over here. But uh, this young man here is lose, has lost an eye, torn to shreds. That sounds pretty bad. Let's check his bio real quick. Body modder, trigger happy, fast walker. So pretty darn good pawn. Especially if we can get him some sort of golden eyeball or something, he'll be happy about it. And then of course there's Chris. We don't, we just, <laughs> we all know Chris, don't we? But um, he's actually not a bad pawn. We're definitely worth keeping him around. Let's check his... Oh, he's about 50%. So we're definitely making some progress on our goofy old Chris. Well, the saga of Chris being a douchebag is not over yet. He just had a tantrum, which was... Oh my god, really, really quick. That's the shortest tantrum I've ever seen. He didn't even destroy anything. He's just really weak and hurt. He's got a couple of really old scars that are just aching and stuff, but either way, that was kind of funny to see. Okay, I'll take it every day. Come on, give me all those mental breaks that short. Oh boy, check this out. We just had another arcane items collector stop by, and this is a big trade, big trade. I had to sell quite a bit of stuff, including some unrefined magicite, which I didn't really want to get rid of, but look at what we're getting in exchange. An arcane tome for ice, which is very expensive, and a steel paragon's helm. Let's take a look at the helm first. It's right here. Steel paragon's helm. Normal quality a heavily enchanted helm meant to identify elite warriors i already know who's going to wear this too by the way paragon's helm is enchanted and provides additional benefits to train mages and fighters energy cost is reduced i guess for like all their abilities class xp gain boosted by 15 percent max energy increased arcane resistance increased it's a headpiece social impact increased that's what really made my choice for me and melee hit chance and aiming time is reduced so we're going to give this to Barra, our legendary sniper who's actually right now if you'll see over here, he's the one engaged in this trade. So he's already wearing a piece of gear too that boosts his social impact as well. So yeah, hopefully we're getting a decent discount. So take a look at the silver here too. I'm just barely eking out 14 silver from the trader. Look how much he's got in reserve. But either way, uh, I was really tempted to try and somehow like maybe sell the thrombo and get this orb of souls. 
but I'm not going to mess with it right now, although this looks like a really cool item. You basically absorb all traits from a target pawn, and they lose absorbed traits, and then you can transfer absorbed traits into another human-like pawn. I don't know how many times that works, but that's crazy. That's not a reskin of like a consumable already existed. That's a unique item, I have to say, I think, created by the game, uh, the mod, which is cool. But either way, um, oh yeah, and we're getting the Tome of, uh, uh, what is it? No, no, I'm sorry, we're getting the Tome for Ice. I just noticed the Blizzard spell here too for 2,700 silver, ouch. But this bad boy right here is 4,200 silver, so I figure this must be a really incredible class, the Ice Mage or whatever. Yeah, 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 so the next magically gifted pawn we get is going to be promoted to an Ice Mage. Oh, look at the helmet too. So gorgeous. All right, let's get our boy Barra over here right away to put this on before somebody else picks it up. Oh, look at that helmet there. This, so this is the one he was wearing down here, but this one's cool. It looks better from the side. So if I let him go, yeah, that looks really amazing. Yeah, but regardless of its look, yeah, the real real deal is its impact here and the benefits he gets. So that's going to make him even more deadly. Well, 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 there it is right there. Flesh Golem. We have discovered the research. In fact, we're well on our way to flesh attachments, which uh, I guess allow us to give enhancements to our golem, our flesh golem. So that's pretty cool. Now, if we'll look, it does take 450 human meat. Unfortunately, we don't have any raiders bodies, well, that are still fresh. So we are going to have to wait until the next raid, but that's not a big deal. What I've gone ahead and done, too, in anticipation of the next raid is I very carefully looked at all the cooks to figure out if any of them are cannibals or psychopaths. And, of course, we got lucky. Our boy Kaz is both a good cook and he's a psychopath. So what I've done is I've set up a specific bill here to butcher only human type corpses that are non-colonists no animals or anything like that we've still got a normal butcher order over here but this one's just for those flesh people and are just for the people's flesh and kaz will be the one who carries it out now still gonna give the rest of the colonists a mood debuff if unless they've changed the mechanics or if they're a psychopath anything it won't affect them but um, nonetheless it drops off eventually and if we can make some serious defenders here that'll be really cool but looks like we are now in the business of harvesting human flesh so i'm thinking about changing this see we've got this room dug out now i'm pretty sure i'm gonna switch this into our barn, believe it or not, this is where the animals are going to go because I don't need a really big space. In fact, that's plenty of room. And this is going to become the freezer here. I'm going to move all the storage, the steel hooks, the zone. We'll have a nice little open zone here for corpses, but this will definitely serve us a lot better. And if this thing has trouble keeping it cold, we can always section a part of it off, you know, just put a wall up halfway or a third of the way through it and just convert that into something else but this up here i've also got planned for i'm gonna try some underground growing operation i've just got three little grow cells set up here i don't know how exactly we're gonna manage it but i'm sure there's some magical stuff or some spell casting we can do to help out with that so that's what we're looking at oh and then one last final thing about the golems too we do have the ability to make stone golems dormant stone golem and uh maharal golems which is like a leather it's got leather hay steel soft fur so unrefined magicite so it's just a conglomeration of different stuff i haven't seen any of them built yet i'm wondering construction set times six i should suspend this and let's see blitz is a yeah he probably can do that Oh, we're missing 300 stone? How's that possible? Does it require a certain type of stone? I don't understand that. Oh. Oh, cobblestone. Crushed granite. So we do need to construct one of those, like, 
stone crushing stations. I had one of those early, early on, I believe, but I got rid of it because of, yeah, stone cutting spot, right? This is what we want, I think. All right, I'll slap that down there and we'll see if that can produce what we need. Everybody's gathering, guys. It is time to see if the long journey of Chris's conversion is coming to an end. So we are finally ready for a brand new conversion ritual, which I've got queued up. You can see Chris is probably being carted over here right now. Yep, there he is making his move, Barra. With that beautiful new helmet has a hold of him, so there's no worries that the prisoner will escape. The once colonist turned prisoner. Okay, he, he abandoned us, remember. Don't forget that fact. Alright, let's speed this up, see what happens. And here we go. Oh, it was effective. Now, that does not mean he was actually converted uh, i think we're gonna have to wait till he gets moved back to prison but yeah he's not necessarily been converted but we did get a point for that so that's pretty huge what's that bring us to eight yeah eight whoa check that out inspired recruitment blade now sometimes they'll get that kind of recruitment and they won't actually be assigned to it yeah see blade's not assigned to wardening oh that's huge actually come here blade Let's get you to recruit. Not worried about Chris in this circumstance, but let's take a look at him. Oh, oh super close. So Barra, his conversion spell is on cooldown, so we won't worry about that right now. But let's take a look at these other two prisoners. Again, we're going for both of these. Now, Hero's got a 12 resistance. Oh, and Oyster's got a 1, so he's almost recruited. But this is so fortunate. If we take Blade now, let's grab him. And we have him use, yeah, chat with Hero. That will attempt to convert her, and it's going to bypass all that resistance. So let's get him over here and see if we can't get lucky with a brand new pawn. Okay, here he is. Blade's talking to her. Hero. Let's take a look at her, too, while he's too smart. Bloodlust. Not bad. Not with a very capable fighting pawn here with no physical defects whatsoever. Come on. Of course, Blade is our Blade Dancer. Very, very interesting sort of physical attribute. Unfortunately, he's nowhere near as good a fighter as Hero. This is taking forever. Oh, there it is. We did it. Okay, Hero has joined us. It's official. So that's good news for sure. Of course, I get the fun part of going through and changing her up, assigning her work tab and all that, but that is good news. I'm glad to get that prison emptied out, even if it's just a little bit. Whoa, check this guy out. So Dark Light here was attracted by a recent um, party, fun party we had, which is just that uh, flag burning ceremony. And he showed up. He's creepy breathing, unaffected by death, which is an interesting one. Um, yeah, he doesn't care about corpses or anything like that. He's incapable of a lot of stuff here, but most importantly, he's a good animal handler, which we do need. He's um, already of the right ideology. And he's a doctor, intellectual, but he's 84 years old. Right arm, bad back. I'm actually tempted to go ahead and accept him. Yeah, yeah, because again, I mean, when we reject them, people do get a little mood debuff. It's all, I think it's like between three and five, but still, it's annoying. So he is nonviolent too. I don't know if I mentioned that, but either way, Darklight's a cool name. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And so we got lucky and a combat supplier just flew by overhead on his little Zeppelin. Look at this list over here. Oh my God, this is all the weapons we've got stored up. Now, they're not worth a lot. All told, it was about, it was a little, like, 2,600. Yeah, 2,600 silver. But I've been trying to avoid buying this high-tech medicine, but we have to do it. I mean, for one thing, I'm low on medicine, and I needed to purchase something here from him to just balance it out a little bit. And he doesn't really have anything else that's interesting, surprisingly. No great weapons or anything. So we're doing this. Replenish our silver, get some good medicine in the colony. And hey, that's uh, that was a big trade. Oh my god, wait, let's look. Look at this. It still looks pretty messy, but a lot of the storage space has now been cleared out. And in fact, why didn't these sell? 
Oh wait, these are actually concurrently empty. Yeah, yeah. The the Anna or the graphic here is just for looks. That's right. That's right. But nonetheless, once these shells get filled up, the floors are going to be cleared a lot more. I do have a few weapons still left over, so it's not the end of the world. Plus, we can get Bear to craft some too. But I was kind of hoping to end today's episode on a cliffhanger, think, thinking a raid might stop by, but I think this is a probably a good place to end it too here, with a combat supplier coming by to pick up all our unwanted stuff. It's a, it's a high note to end on instead of a cliffhanger, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. It's basically the journey, Chris's journey to uh, righteousness. We're going to rename him to Saint Chris, I think, once he's fully converted, and he's almost there, but... Anyway, guys, hit that like button if you enjoyed it today. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you all on the next one.